life starts at 40. That's what they say, right? And I don't know how you feel about this statement, but definitely science doesn't agree with this. Actually, in 2019, a group of Australian geneticists, they actually developed a way to measure the maximum lifespan of a species. And they determined that for humans, the maximum lifespan is 38 years. We are talking about 38 years. And the same number came also from studies by, uh, done by anthropologists uh, that uh, looking at remains of early humans and Neanderthal, they reached the same conclusion. Of course, if we look at the, what happens in society, the numbers are very different. In average, uh, males uh, live uh, a lifespan of uh, uh, 79 years, and females, uh, they live 85 years. And this is true in Europe uh, as well as in the United States. So we are talking double the lifespan that is expected from us based on our genetic makeup. And how is this possible? So, well, uh, two main things happened that changed uh, our lifespan. From one side, the progress made in medicine, especially in the last uh, century, and then also the change in lifestyle. So these two things make the difference. Are we okay for the lifespan how it is right now? No, of course we want more. But what we also want uh, is to see our kids and grandkids grow up and become adults themselves. We want fertility. We want to run a marathon when we are 60. And we want sharp eyes and we want a sharp brain, etc., etc. So what we really care about is not really only the lifespan, but the health span, how long we are healthy and fully functional. This is really where uh, the conversation is going. And, uh, I've been now for a while very interested in the biology of aging. And I spent the last decades trying to understand if and how it's possible to safely and effectively extend our youth for longer. I'm a stem cell and developmental biologist by training. So when I think about aging, the thing that I think about is actually what happens to cells during time. And what happens to cells involves especially two most important players. From one side, we have the stem cells, and on the other side, we have the senescent cells. And you can think about them as a continuum uh, in a spectrum of uh, differentiation and evolution. On one side, uh, stem cells are youthful and young and potent cells that can divide and form other cells and regenerate a tissue. And the senescent cells are actually old. They cannot divide anymore. They are stuck in their non-functional state. And uh, they can uh, produce any cell anymore. And what happens during time is that actually, when we get older and older, our stem cells stop working. And so they don't regenerate tissue anymore. And that's why we get uh, uh, white hair. That's why our muscle becomes frail, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And on the other side, we have an accumulation of these senescent cells, these old cells. And what we know now is that actually even a small percentage of senescent cells in our tissue really stop the tissue for functioning uh, properly. And uh, it has been proven in the last few years that if we remove the senescent cells from an organ, the organ will work much better. So why these two things happen? Why do we end up with less stem cells and more senescent cells? Is there some sort of punishment? Is this a mistake of evolution? Is this a way to regulate the number of humans on this planet? No, actually, this is the basis of the yin and yang of aging. These two things happen because they control and limit the development of cancer. So they protect us from cancer and tumors. Remember that, by definition, an immortal cell is actually a cancer cell. So definitely is not what we want. We want to keep our cells in, the, in this perfect uh, balance between the self-renewal of the stem cells and the maintenance of a tissue and uh, the, the process of senescence, but we don't want to unleash completely this regulation. So what can we do? to maintain this perfect balance in our tissues. Well, today, after decades and decades of studies worldwide, I can finally unveil the big two secrets of how to live a long life. Eat well and exercise. 
I know uh, this is not surprising, but actually still remain in 2021, this remains the two most important things that we can do to live a healthy and long and happy life. So that, that's for sure. But uh, I have to say that in the last few years uh, in science, there has been a lot of development and understanding in what else we can do to extend the health span and to stop, uh, prevent and cure age-associated diseases. We are talking about Alzheimer, Parkinson, diabetes, osteoporosis, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I was doing my research at Stanford University with Michael Clark and his team. And by pure serendipity, we started uh, studying something that gave us very special insights into the biology of aging. We started studying people with Down syndrome. And as you, most of you know, people with Down syndrome, they actually have uh, an extra copy of chromosome 21. This means that they have three copies instead of two of a small chromosome in our genome. What fewer people know is that actually people with Down syndrome, they present signs of premature aging. So they have early onset Alzheimer by age of 40, they have osteoporosis, they have alopecia, they have skin aging. And uh, what happens at the cellular level is that once again, there are less stem cells and more senescent cells. So we spent a lot of time trying to understand what's really going on in Down syndrome to cause the accelerated aging. And we actually realized that there was an imbalance of a protein called USP16 that caused this imbalance. USP16 regulates actually the ratio between stem cells and senescent cells. And if you revert this imbalance that you see in Down syndrome, you can actually cure several of the uh, age-associated diseases that can be observed. So this opened really a Pandora box uh, on this uh, space of senoblocker. The senoblocker, like USP16, are basically the gatekeepers of aging. They are able to control the perfect ratio between stem cell and senescent cells. And actually, now we are uh, using this senoblocker to develop treatment for age-associated diseases. For example, we are developing a treatment for osteoarthritis, and we should go into clinical trial in a couple of years from now. So what we learned so far is that really, once again, senoblockers show us that in mediostat virtus, the best that stays in the middle. We want to maintain stem cell activity, not too many st uh, senescent cells, but we want to steep, uh, uh, keep a control on these processes so we don't get cancer. And I just want to end uh, with one of my favorite quotes from Seneca, a Roman uh, philosopher, that 2,000 years ago, in his essay on the a shortness of life, he said, uh, it's not that our life is short, it's just that we waste a lot of it. We are very frugal with our personal property, but when it comes to squandering time, we are very wasteful of the one thing that is very important for us. Seneca actually died at age 69, healthy as a fish, just because he was forced to kill himself. So I hope we can really live fully and healthy until our last breath. Thank you.